to the cast off. This is the number one recasting show on the internet where two contestants compete by recasting favorite actors in movies you love. I'm your host, Craig Price, and tonight we celebrate my birthday today. Yes, today, August 23rd, my birthday. I'll have a Venmo, a Venmo for you a little bit later on. Uh, we are promoting my favorite event of the year, and that is FanX Salt Lake. And it's one month from now, September 22nd to the 24th. And to celebrate this special event, I have brought two very special people, some of my favorite people of all at FanX. And he is the face, the voice, and the dad jokester of FanX, one of the best in the business from Provost Park Pass. That is Chris Provost. He is the FanX MC. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing so well. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. This is going to be so much fun. And, of course, right next to you, a recurring guest on the show uh, and a Matinee Heroes podcast, Fan X Programming Director, Filmmaker Extraordinaire, Blake Castleman. How are you, Blake? I'm good, Craig. I, I'm very good because, you know, I'm going to wipe the floor with Chris here awesome. in just a minute. Oh, let the, <laughs> let the big words happen all at once here. So we're going to start off with Chris. Chris, talk a little bit about how you got involved with FanX because you are the MC, and not every uh, every event that I've been to has an MC. They may have people come in and introduce stuff throughout the thing, but to have a singular yeah. person like yourself, you literally are the voice and the face of FanX. Everybody knows you. Everybody loves you. Uh, you've made yourself quite a home there. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of FanX. FanX is so important to me. It is the, one of the best, if not the best event in the entire world. It is so much fun. Uh, I was asked at the time when they were uh, doing this back way back in the day, uh, I was working on a sci-fi uh, television show uh, called Zeros, and they're filming the pilot here. And some people who are working on FanX said, hey, you know this guy? And they asked me if I wanted to be the MC. At that time, though, they had four MCs, and the other three, they were more interested in moderating. And so I was like, I'll be an MC. And it was literally just a job where I just like, kind of point to exits and say, like, welcome, welcome. And that was it. And on the very on the second day, we had Stan Lee, and he was super late getting to his panel, and the audience was getting a little cranky. And I walked up on stage just to kind of quell the audience, and I told a joke. I told my first pun up there, and it went over like a lead balloon. But at that point, this became part of a, a fan X. And so we just started doing jokes, and that's how it all started. So it's all thanks to Stan Lee for being late. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. Well, you do a great job up there, but also you do something that is very unique and interesting. You are part of something you started, the Provo Park Pass. The yeah. Provo, the Provost Park Pass. I keep calling you want to say Provo because it's Utah. That's okay. Uh, the yeah. Provost Park Pass where you go all over. Now, I do remember COVID sidetracked you because you were going to get on a plane the day, the day before they shut down the world to go yeah. do a world tour of Disneyland parks. So explain the Park Pass. Yeah, so what it is, it's a YouTube channel. And it's mostly about uh, Disney and theme parks. It's like all about their history, about their, their attractions, their food. And we, we do a deep dives. We do a, the bread and butter of the channel. It's called Secrets Revealed. We do lots of different secrets about the uh, Disney. And we did. We started a world tour. And we start, the day that we started, we actually flew to Florida. And then we got ended up in Disneyland uh, Paris. At that point, COVID really got kicked into high gear, and they sent us back here to wait. Like, just wait two weeks, and then, of course, the world shut down. Something funny, though, is that we did a video where my wife and I built uh, Disneyland in our basement just to kind of entertain people. And that video went viral, and it got picked up by the was the BBC in England. And they, uh, they sent us a waiver. said, can we show this on our news program? And we're like, sure. And they showed it, and I was horrified. They're like, this is what Americans are doing during the <laughs> pandemic. And I was like, ah, oh, geez, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so. you represent all of America, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was great. What a sobering thought that is, because uh, we have that same issue here at Matinee Heroes, where we are like the top 10 film podcast in Kuwait. And we're trying to figure out, is that because it's military? Or is, awesome. is some young Kuwaiti learning English using matinee heroes? And I'm just like, oh, that is going to be awful. If, that's, if we're representing America, this kid needs to do something different. But uh, Blake, <laughs> it's been a little bit since you've been on. And uh, you were doing the, your movie called Limbo, correct? Yes. We <laughs> shot it in April. And then we did some pickup shots in May. And it's being edited right now. But apparently we're going to do a few more pickup shots. Uh, the goal is to have the movie completely done by FanX in September. So, fingers crossed. Oh, I have no doubts. You got a good crew. Have that done, yeah. So, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, this is my first uh, film I've been able to produce in a few years. So, it's uh, pre-COVID was the last time. So, it was nice to get back on 
that horse and and enjoy being on set and working with some very talented actors and filmmakers. Well, one thing I tell people unabashedly, I, I have no problem saying this to anybody who asks or sometimes they don't. Uh, Blake, you run one of the best programming ships in the industry. Um, I, it may be chaos in, to you, but for the people who come in and actually do it, uh, it's smooth sailing. And so how did you get involved with programming at FanX? It was uh, one of those knowing someone type of stories because um, – I thought Dan Farr was your uncle or something, some nepotism. No, it's, Utah, well, it's Utah. Everybody could be a cousin. He could be. We, we ha I haven't done the ancestry thing yet. Uh, but what happened was I had a friend who did contact Dan Farr. Um, at this point, the the first Fan X, or as it was called back in that day, Salt Lake Comic Con. Oh, no, no, don't announced. say that. We're going to get sued. Oh no! I, no. I, I don't need to, I don't need to get sued for millions of dollars. Please don't do that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we we were originally called. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I'll and, beep it out. Uh, and so we, I I I was hoping to to be a panelist or a guest there, based on my film and my comic book work, and then. Um, I had a friend call me, and he had been in conversation with Dan Farr, and my friend, uh, who was an artist and a craftsman, um, was uh, kind of giving Dan uh, uh, kind of a, a, a little bit of a pitch session of, uh, this is what I feel I can do for the show, what do you think? And Dan said, well, what I really need is someone to run the programming, uh, organize the panels, schedule them, and also run a film festival. In the early days of the show, we did do a film festival. And my friend said, oh, I know the perfect person because he knew I'd, I had worked behind the scenes at some other shows. I uh, also worked on some local film festivals too. And so I got a phone call from this friend saying, hey, here's Dan Farr's phone number, give him a call. And so I did, I got Dan's voicemail. And so I introduced myself in the voicemail uh, the next day, Dan called me. We set up a meeting, and the rest is know, history. The rest is history. Well, uh, like I said, I, I do think you run a very tight ship there. Like I said, I know when I talk to you, you don't explain it that way. But when I when I see it and have been other places and know how chaotic it is, uh, you guys do a great job. And the fact that uh, the best mistake you ever made was getting me to come on, I appreciate that. Um, people oh, no. no, Craig, that was not a mistake. <laughs> People always ask, how do you get to be a moderator? How do you get to be a moderator? And I, I tell people the actual truth. Well, I emailed them. I don't know anybody in Salt Lake I, except for my, you know, I don't know anybody associated with FanX. I simply sent a, a thing to you saying, hey, I've done some of this in the past. I have family there. I'd certainly like to use this uh, event to get out of a lot of family obligations. And so if I can make my, my week half as much by going to this, the, the, this Comic-Con, I'd be thrilled and the rest is history and you have put me up with some great people so i really appreciate everything you've done for me blake uh both personally and professionally it's been a hell of a ride and i really appreciate all you do well uh you've been great to work with craig uh we appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you every show and to be fair it wasn't just an email you sent me you well you you supplied a link to in the email. Uh, yeah, you 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 supplied a link to some clips of some past uh, panels you moderated. And I watched them. And I said this guy knows what he's doing. So yeah. it was an easy decision. Well, I, again, like I said, I appreciate it. It has been super fun, and it is my favorite event of all the year. But well, you know what? We've got a game to do. So we've got to get going because uh, we've got things happening here. So let's start off with the rules at first. So if you've not watched before. Uh, the rules are fairly simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, name a character in the movie, and our contestants will recast them with a another actor uh, throughout all of time and space. We call it Doctor Who rules here. So whoever you want throughout time and space. Um, we have judges, and the best choice gets one point. I play along with you guys, so if you happen to pick my secret selection, that's a point. And let's be honest, my secret selection is usually the best choice, so that's a good way of getting two points a lot of the time. So if you feel like you're slipping away... You may have to just suck it up and try to sink with my mind, which I don't recommend, but it could happen. Um, so that's a good way of getting back. Person with the most points wins. If there's a tie, we will do the double feature to win, and we'll explain that when and if it's necessary. And then, of course, it is my birthday today. And so last week, 
we we released on Friday. Uh, every year we do our favorite movies on the podcast, and I picked Clear and Present Danger. So you can head over to matineeheroes.com slash subscribe to download that. And while you're there, you can also hear tonight's post show exclusively on the audio version of Cast Off. That's every Thursday in the Matinee Hero feed. And if you like the show in video format, head over to matineeheroes.com slash cast off and subscribe. We, uh, uh, you know, I've been talking about this for months now. I'm not Chris Provost. I don't have millions and millions of followers. Uh, I can't, I can't, I need 20 people on my YouTube just to get the custom URL. I want that. Chris has had it since day one because he's, he's amazing. But other, the rest of us schmucks, we got to work for it. So uh, if you head over to matinehearns.com slash cast off, click on the YouTube link and subscribe. Hey, I'd really appreciate it. But we have a show to do. And right now we've got two of the best in the business and we want to talk about aliens. Uh, we're going to talk about this. So the reason I picked this movie in particular is because the great actor Vincent D'Onofrio is scheduled to appear, and his acting in this movie is out of this world as he plays a weird alien roach guy in tonight's movie, Men in Black. But we start off, and Chris, you're going to go first, so we'll start sure. with Chris. Uh, Chris, we start off with Tommy Lee Jones as Agent K, the no-nonsense agent that sees potential in Agent uh, J, who is Will Smith. So I will ask you, Chris, who do you have as the great replacement for tommy lee jones and why uh, yeah so this is this is great I, I have to say this i almost did this but i didn't do this so clint eastwood was actually offered this role and he's my favorite actor of all time but i didn't choose him so i chose who i thought would be the very best and that's jeffrey dean morgan oh absolutely. Uh, you guys, yeah and yeah we all know jeffrey dean morgan uh as walking dead he was in uh was it the losers supernatural watchmen and he's just a no-nonsense character he, he, and he does have really good uh, comedic timing, and he, but he, you have to have this particular role for Agent K. you got to play a straight man, and I don't think anybody could really do that better. I mean, he's just the perfect person to do this. The types of movies, he gets a little silly movie sometimes. He plays a perfect straight man, and I think he'd be a fantastic Agent K for sure. I love him, and I think that if we just take him out of the Watchmen and put him in Spider-Man, he'd make a great J. Jonah Jameson. He would be amazing. He would be amazing. So Absolutely. we got Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Uh, Blake, who do you have to possibly go up against The Walking Dead? Well, I uh, I decided to uh, do some, some cross-gendering with the agents in the movie, and so... Um, I decided to go with uh, Sigourney Weaver as Agent K. Oh, absolutely. Sigourney Weaver. She is being, she, you want a badass alien killer, get Sigourney Weaver. So she's perfect. She was in the Aliens movies, Ghostbusters, Galaxy Quest, Working Girl, The Cabin in the Woods. All five of those movies we have done here at Matinee Heroes. So head over to matineeheroes.com and go to the archives and you can listen to us talk about those. So that's always a good one. I appreciate that pick because Sigourney Weaver is amazing. I got to meet her in Houston and what, uh, I mean, she is a timeless beauty. She's getting older and getting better looking. It's crazy. I don't understand how that works. Um, but she's phenomenal. So that's a good one. We've got Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Sigourney Weaver. Our judges talked about it, and you got to go with the queen badass, uh, Sigourney Weaver. I went with Idris Elba. Uh, I thought he would be good because he can play that uh, straightforward guy when he wants to be, especially when he was the black Superman in Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> so next we get to Will Smith. Now, Will Smith is Agent J, who, uh, who's learning for the first time that the universe is much bigger than he thought. So, uh, Blake, who do you have playing and replacing, uh, who, I guess he was pretty big at the time, but I think this movie launched him to a higher level. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was thinking of uh, people that uh, might have been around the same age as, as uh, these characters, these actors that played these characters at the same time. Um, my, first, uh, my first thought was uh, Chris Rock, but then I thought it might be too soon to go there. Too soon. Uh, well, don't, worry, don't forget, all of time and space. So if you wanted a 20-year-old Chris Rock, we could do it. Absolutely. But uh, in, in, in sticking with the kind of uh, cross-gendering um, theme with uh, the agents, I decided to go with uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, absolutely. Was, uh, Agent J. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg, as, uh, she's an ERGOT winner, which means she's won an Emmy, an ERGOT. Uh, she's an EGOT. ERGOT is the, ERCOT is the 
company in Texas that can't keep the lights on. She's an EGOT winner. She's got an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. The Color Purple she's amazing in. Ghost she won an Oscar for. She did the Sister Act movies, Jumpin' Jack Flash, and everyone has to take a check. Theodore Rex, where she actually did a buddy cop movie with, yes, that's correct, a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to respond to that. So, uh, Chris, who do you have? I think Whoopi Goldberg's great. Who do you have to go up against Whoopi Goldberg? Well, that's a that's a great question, and I had to do. I, I think uh, Blake and I were actually in the simpatico there for a brief moment, but I did. I chose. It's not too soon. I chose Chris Rock. I think Chris Rock would be fantastic in this particular role. I mean, it's a slap heard around the world, right? But we remove that. He he's his comedic time timing is is like unparalleled. He's so funny, and I think he this this movie he could I mean, even look at him right there. Uh, he just he's the he's the guy. Yeah. He's Agent J. Yeah, known for not keeping things out his mouth. Um, and <laughs> yeah. I do appreciate the justice of replacing Will Smith with Chris Rock. The, the, that is great. Of course, we know him from Saturday Night Live in New Jack City. Sure. Uh, he was in the Lethal Weapon movies. He's the, his voice, he does the, he's the zebra in the Madagascar mm -hmm. movies. And, of course, who could forget him being in Pootie Tang, the, the Oscar-nominated Pootie Tang. I believe that's <laughs> true. So we have Whoopi Goldberg, Chris Rock. The judges decided Chris Rock, and we've got a tie game. Uh, of course, you're going to go with Chris Rock. Uh, I went with Paul Rudd, uh, Paul, uh, uh, a middle-aged Paul Rudd, because I think he's very personable and funny, and he, him constantly being freaked out would work for me, I think. So uh, next we get to Linda Fiorentino as Dr. Laurel Weaver, a civilian that helps the boys despite memory zapped a few times. She gets zapped yeah. quite a bit. Um, so we're going to start with Chris. Chris, who do you have? Uh, playing the doctor. Yeah, well, this is an interesting role. Do you know that Linda won some trivia about this? Did you know she won her role for this movie in a poker game? She's playing with uh, Barry, the director, and she, she bet her hand. Says, if I win, I get a role in this film, and she actually won. Um, and I think she does a good job in this film, but the person I chose, I chose Jane Mansfield to play uh, Agent L. Uh, and I just, because you said we go any time we want, yeah. and I think that she's got this, she has kind of that I don't even know that that je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Yes. On this screen, I think she would have been a lot of fun to see her and Chris Rock kind of riffing back together. And I think it would have been a lot of fun to see the two of them on, on a film together. And I think it would have been a match. Well, she's sure. known for being the apple of Sophia Loren's eye. Mm -hmm. And I say that mm -hmm. because this picture has been floating uh -huh. the internet yes. for years. And so yes. if you want, this is def this is in the, the, the dictionary for the definition of side eye. Uh, so yeah. She, yeah. So, but she was in some great movies in the 50s, The Girls Can't Help It, The Way We're Bust, Too Hot to Handle, Promises, mm -hmm. Promises, where she was the first American nude in a movie uh, and yeah. The Burglar. So uh, apparently Chris likes him naked here, James Mansfield, but that's really good. He didn't know. I'm sure you didn't know she was <laughs> the first. I didn't even know that, but that's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> So, what naked lady did you pick for this one, Blake? Yeah, I, I picked a naked man, not a naked lady. All right, that's uh, fine. I, of course, I couldn't think of any movies that he might have been naked in. Um, but I, you know, uh, with uh, with Linda, uh, her last name being, uh, you know, kind of exotic, kind of Italian sounding, I said, "Who? What's an actor that was around the same age at the time?" that uh, also has uh, kind of a, a foreign-sounding name that might have been good for that role. And I picked Emilio Estevez. So you just went with a foreign-sounding name. So that's – that's uh, you don't even need to see the headshots or anything. Just look for something. But uh, he, a, a Brat Pack member, he was in The Breakfast Club, St. Elmo's Fire, The Outsiders, Repo Man, and then The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, he's great. He's actually a, turned into a very good director now too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have James Mansfield. Emilio Estevez. The judges looked at each other and said, James Manfield, really? No, Emilio Estevez, because I think Jane Mansfield is just <laughs> too sexy for that part. Uh, I, it's one of those situations where she is like uh, in um, Tomorrow Never Dies when we had Denise Richards as a scientist. I don't really buy that. <laughs> she's just too good looking. But I went with Natalie Portman, who isn't – she's amazing good looking, and I believe her as a doctor. So next we get to the man himself. The whole reason we're doing it tonight – uh, the the main attraction for me, uh, for the big guests at FanX, that's Vincent D'Onofrio, is Edgar the Bugman. Uh, I put this up as one of the best physical 
physical roles ever done. Uh, what he did with it was beyond exceptional, and to, I, he's not even known for physical, his physicality, so he's really good. But we're going to start with Blake. Uh, Blake, who do, who do you have to replace the bug man? Edgar. I, you know, not many actors could do what Vincent D'Onofrio did in that movie. It's such an, like you said, it's an amazing physical performance. That he puts on i mean the makeup yeah he has makeup on but what sells him as a human possessed by an alien is his physical performance and so i was thinking well instead of trying to find an actor that could that has the talent uh to to match that i thought well what's another vincent out there who's kind of a bug anyway and <laughs> wouldn't have to stretch too far to to play uh, you know, someone possessed by an alien bug, and so I, I, I've, uh, I picked Vince, or rather, Vincent McMahon. Oh no, it's Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon, we've known forever. Um, he owned the WWE. He recently retired uh, against his will, I'm assuming, because of all the lawsuits. But uh, it was very difficult to find him. He's only been a voice in some cartoons that they've got. He was in the uh, Scooby Doo Curse of the Speed Demon. He was in Flintstones and the WWE Stone Age Smackdown. Apparently, there was a cartoon called Camp WWE. I have no idea what Surf's Up 2 Wave Mania is, but he was also in the Jetsons and WWE Robo WrestleMania. Um, I'm not really quite sure what to say about this pick. Um, this, is, this, is, this is the riskiest pick probably in the history of the show. Uh, we'll see if it pays off, but this is you really uh, are throwing some spaghetti against the wall on this one, and uh, we'll see if it works for you. Chris, who could possibly outact Vince McMahon? I, that's a lot. That's those are long odds. Way to go, Blake. I like what you did there. Uh, <laughs> I am going to say that Vincent uh, was perfectly cast in this film, and it's, we're so excited because he is going to be coming to Fan X. Excited about that. And I don't know if you just heard this. They just announced that he's going to be doing uh, 18 episodes of the new Daredevil on Disney Plus coming out. So excited. kudos to him. But you need somebody who's got that that kind of like the, the physical humor. And there's very few actors that could do that. But I think I found somebody who maybe could have done it. And that would have been Jim Carrey in his prime. We're talking like the, when he was in the time of Mask and like Dumb and Dumber. He, he used to be able to do that, that, that crazy comedy, that physical comedy. And I think he would have been able to pull off that bug. Uh, having the human skin suit on and a very, I think it could have done a good job with that. Oh, I, no doubt about that. That's a, that's a tough one. So we got Vince McMahon, Jim Carrey, <laughs> a nail biter if I've ever seen one. And let's be honest, this is Jim Carrey. I mean, this is what it is. And uh, uh, I went with Jim Carrey as well. So that means that Chris what? Provost, you get an extra point and you have gone from one down to one ahead. Oh, it feels good. Yeah, feels there, good. there you go. Uh, Next, we have oh, the amazing Rip Torn, who mm -hmm. is pretty low-key in this movie, but if you've seen Rip Torn in his history of his career, he was amazing as Chief Zed, the man in charge of the Men in Black. So, uh, Chris, who do you have playing the head boss? Right. Uh, this is a fun role, I think, to play. And, and when I was thinking about this, I was trying to, like, who could play this at a, at a really high level, make it really fun? And that's Darren McGavin. Yeah. And you probably maybe don't know who that is right at the top. But he was the dad on A Christmas Story, perfectly cast, and I think he would make an excellent, excellent head of uh, the Men in Black. I think he's he, – because he's got that kind of curmudgeon -y way he could talk, but also very lovable. This was an exceptional pick from you because I wasn't expecting Darren McGavin, but as soon as you said it, I love Darren McGavin. He's a major award winner from we saw in, in a, a Christmas Story. But, <laughs> Fragile. Yeah, but more importantly, uh, something that uh, – if he was still with us today, I know we would want him at Fan X because he was in The Night Stalker, which was a, a movie, I mean, a television show well ahead of itself. He played a supernatural detective in the late 70s, early 80s. That was not unheard of. But, of course, he was in some mainstream stuff like The Natural and Billy Madison and, of course, the ill-fated 1990 Captain America. Oh, that was, that was tough. Um, so um, what wrestling god do you have to play the head of this, uh, Blake? Wrestling God. I'm uh, returning to the world of acting, and I just, uh, I just thought, you know, who, who has the voice of authority? Who, 
who has the voice of God that actually played God, who could lead a group of agents trying to keep the knowledge of aliens away from the world and who, who could be convincing and in doing that, and I came up with Morgan Freeman. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He is the voice of God. He was in the Shawshank Redemption, Seven, the Dark Knight Trilogy, Unforgiven, and Glory. Once again, Blake, you know how to play this game because all five of those movies we've done at Matinee Heroes. So head over to matineeheroes.com and go to the archives and listen to those episodes. Uh, always good when you plug in every single one. I'd give you extra points for it, but then I would have people purposely trying to pick those, and I don't want that. I think, I, he's, I think he's pandering a little bit. That's but okay. I like the choice the, too. I don't. The judges have already decided he can't change it now. Uh, so we have. Darren McGavin, which is a fantastic out of the left field choice that isn't really out of left field. It's perfect. And Morgan Freeman, who's also perfect. The judges decided, and you know what? The judges are younger than me. They went with Morgan Freeman, who they know. Um, I think if they had known Darren McGavin, they probably would have gone that way. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I really think, Chris, that was a really good one. Well, I went with Richard you. Jenkins, uh, the great character actor that we see in everything. It, it, the Cabin in the Woods is where I think he would come from. He'd be really good as that neurotic guy in yeah. charge. Uh, so next we get to, oh, got to say, this, this is someone I want you to bring to Fan X. I don't think he'll ever do it because uh, I don't think he does conventions. But if you can get Tony Shalhoub to show up, yeah. I will kill my mom to be able to moderate that panel. And my mom would gladly sacrifice that as long as she got to see it afterwards. And that is Tony Shalhoub playing Jack Jeeves, an alien that you can just blow his head off and it'll grow right back. Um, so it, he, is like, uh, he is like an informant for the men in black. So who do you have uh, – who do you have, Blake, to replace Tony Shalhoub, which is almost impossible? It is almost impossible, but Craig, uh, first off, I wanted you to know, and the people out there to know, that they, we have a very strict non matricide policy at Panix. So, um, more of a guideline, really. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, not, it's really more of a suggestion. <laughs> it is, it's a preferred method. But uh, you know, you don't need to, you know, break any laws to moderate a certain panel. All you need to do is ask me. So. Oh, uh, don't say that, because everybody around here who is, finds out that I get a panel that they want will be like, "What? Huh?" So I think you do it very fairly. Um, uh, I think the only time you've ever given me anybody I've directly asked for is because um, the year before, a person canceled, and so I didn't get to do anything. That was the. Anakin Skywalker Emperor panel that uh, we worked really diligently to get that to going and Disney just put the kibosh on and then you let me talk to Chris Eccleston so I appreciate that but that was more of a you got screwed Craig so here we'll make it up to you um, so who do you have to, to play Tony well, Shalhoub you know Tony Shalhoub is it's very hard to replace him you are absolutely right but uh, I thought you know who who uh, who's good at a uh, little bit of uh, crazy that that this Jack Jeeves character has, is, and uh, I went with Bill Murray. Oh yeah, absolutely, uh, wacky Bill Murray. He's a comedy legend. We saw him in Ed Wood, Rushmore, Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, Scrooged, and yes, once again, all five movies will you can find at Matinee Heroes. Uh, Blake is really sucking up big, and I really appreciate that. So go to matineeheroes.com, and you can listen to all of those episodes as well. Uh, Bill Murray's a legend. Uh, but the only problem with Bill Murray is uh, you, I don't know if you'll be able to get him for this recasting because uh, he doesn't check his voicemail. You're screwed. Um, he's, he's missed out on a lot of great roles because he just didn't show up because he couldn't get his voicemail. So, Chris, yes. SNL alum Bill Murray, who you got to go up against that? That's a great choice. I love that. Now, when I was preparing for this, I went and rewatched all the, the Jack G's part. It's, it's hilarious. Tony Shalhoub does an amazing job. But really what he's doing is he's actually playing as Marty Feldman. Um, that's who he's, he's portrayed this whole thing off of. And it is. It, I mean, that would have been perfect cast. This, <laughs> I mean, you're just looking at him. It's hilarious. He's so funny. And when, uh, when uh, Tony was doing this, I think he was actually uh, – portraying marty feldman in this role and so i think that'd be a perfect casting choice oh yeah no he was uh a gone too soon he he died yeah. doing yellow bird at 52 years old but yeah in young frankenstein or frankenstein uh <laughs> he was really good he was what and a lot of people don't know he was huge huge in england before he did young frankenstein so american audience didn't know who he was but british yeah. audiences know him for years and years as this uh comedy legend in in britain so, well, and the thing about it, I don't know if you noticed, when they did Young Frankenstein, they had to do so many outtakes because 
he would always get Gene Wilder yes. to crack up because he, he couldn't not laugh because he was so funny on set. Oh, absolutely. And you can and you can listen to Young Frankenstein at matineeheroes.com when we did Mel Brooks Month. So, yeah, absolutely. So you got one, but there's still four there that you're missing out on. So <laughs> so we've got Bill Murray, Marty Feldman. And you're right. you got to go with Marty Feldman. Uh, and so Chris takes the lead. Four nothing, four three. Sorry, not four nothing, four three. Well, he said four nothing. I heard it. No, no, I, heard it. I corrected it. And then I went with Steve Buscemi, um, from because this is before he was in the. You don't have to digitize his eyes. I just think he's kind of a weird guy. So Steve Buscemi. Well, now we get it's four three. Uh, we get to Beatrice. This is the last one played by Seal Bahan Fallon Hogan, the poor put upon wife of Edgar. So, Chris, you started this whole thing off, so you get to end it. Who yeah. do you have playing the poor put-upon wife? This was a hard one for me to choose because uh, she played the per she played it perfectly. Um, but you need somebody who's believable, who's likable, who's got that good com uh, comedic timing, but can be also be subtle. And so I went with Mindy Kaling, uh, and I think she would be a perfect perfect person in this role because she's she's hilarious. I mean, I just like I actually just like watching whatever she's doing because she's she's just got that subtle comedic timing, which I think really takes for this role. Absolutely. Uh, she does play some self-absorbed characters, but she does have range. I mean, we saw her in A Wrinkle in Time and Ocean's 8 and, of course, The Office. But we do movies here, so we stick with the movies. Yeah. Blake, who do you, who do you have to go up against Mindy Kaling? I looked at the time period the movie came out, and I said, well, who, was a, who would have been a good alternative for that role? Someone who could do comedy, someone who could play like the girl next door at the same time. And so I went with Alicia Silverstone. Alicia Silverstone, yes. She also ruined Batman. Don't bl just blame George Clooney. She and Chris O'Donnell have some blame, too, to pass it all around. Uh, she was in Clueless, Blast from the Past, The Crush, and most recently she was in uh, Rebel Wilson's senior year on Netflix. So she's still out there doing stuff. So uh, let's get going. This is it. It's 4-3. Mindy Kaling versus Alicia Silverstone. Let's talk about this a little bit, Blake. Um, I'm gonna. We've got mine. If you get if you get mine as well. So actually, so no one got mine. I'll just say that this is, I went with Kate McKinning. I want I wanted the alien abduction character she does on Saturday Night Live to be this oh, one. Oh yeah. Um, but because nobody picked mine, this means that either you are going to tie. Uh, you're either going to tie Blake or Chris is going to win outright. So there is this could go into overtime if you play your cards right. Um, but. Before we do that, what is going on here? Everybody, everything's going. All my stuff is going weird. Um, let's re remind folks that you know. Please subscribe to the cast off. We need people. Uh, like I said, we're still twenty people shy. And uh, if you subscribe and comment on the show, we'd appreciate it. Subscribe and don't watch. I don't care. I just want the twenty so I can get my thing. I don't care if you watch. Make get your Russian friends to make uh, fake accounts and spread them out like Zack Snyder did. Do that. I don't care. Uh, but also, more importantly, and uh, I know that Blake has asked about this before. We do have sh cast off shirts. And we will be at FanX, and we will be doing uh, two live cast-off shows, and we've already decided on what those are going to be. So I am going to uh, reveal that we have, not only have we decided that we are going to do this, and this is great, these are, uh, I want everybody in the audience to have one of these so we can see this is, we're going to do a Scream recast, since we're doing a Scream reunion. But we're doing another reunion as well, and I'm I'm getting irritated because uh, I've been looking at all the people coming, and there's one person who is not on the list who should be. Uh, we're doing a, a a clerks a clerks reunion, and Marion Gigliotti is not on the list, and she should be. She's Veronica. She's a sweetheart. She's a friend of mine. Get her. Tell Dan Marion Gigliotti. She's she's at the clerks three thing in San Diego. So, um, but you can do those. Also, I just want to show off that. Um, I will have some custom moderating shoes. Woo -woo. I, if if you've known me, I always uh, I try to get T-shirts for the show, whoever I'm doing. But this year I'm going with uh, shoes, so uh, you can't buy those. Those are just for me. But uh, yes, uh, we will tell you the time and dates of those. So please pick one up. Go to matineeheroes.com/store and you can get those ready to go. And we would appreciate uh, uh, an audience full of T-shirts. Wouldn't that be nice? 
Um, but we have to get back to our game. And it is down to the wire. We have Mindy Kaling versus Alicia Silverstone. Mindy, kind of a, a self-absorbed but New York type who's always plays a little bit snooty, but uh, the character is a, a down-home girl. Alicia Silverstone, very pretty. Uh, I don't know if you could ugly her up enough to, and not that uh, our, our character is ugly, uh, Beatrice is a lovely lady, but uh, Alicia Silverstone might be the same thing as Jane Mansfield where we've got a problem where she's just too good looking. So will it be Mindy Kaling? Will it be Alicia Silverstone? And the winner is Chris Provost. You have won. You are today's winner. And so uh, that means you get today's final thought where you can talk about anything you'd like. Uh, it, keep it short and sweet, but anything you'd like today's winner. Chris I just want to say I'm, I'm humbled. This is a great moment. Thank you, Blake, for being an amazing contestant and uh, allowing me to win. And if you haven't, get your tickets and go to FanX. This is going to be our best event that we've ever had. That is a guarantee. You will see Craig there, and they'll do this. They'll do this live. They're going to do this cast off live. You go in the audience, you can vote and have a lot of fun. And I'm honored to be here. Thank you guys so much for letting me be here. You guys are the best. Well, let's not forget the dates are September 22nd, the 24th. We've got Vincent D'Onofrio, Ron Perlman's going to be there, and a lot of people from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Uh, Henry Thomas canceled on us, but he's coming back, and he's someone that was on my list, or will, is on my list I want to talk to, because he's a great guy. Um, mm -hmm. Kevin Smith and the crew will be there, including uh, Jeff Anderson and Brian O'Halloran from Clerks. Uh, Nev Campbell will be leading the team of an entire original Scream reunion. So we've got Ma Skeet Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, Jamie Kennedy coming. Um, of course, one of the greatest of all time, Giancarlo Esposito. He's just awesome, and he doesn't. It, let's not even talk about his characters because he's just a great guy. Astronaut and cultural icon Bill Shatner. Uh, the queen nerd Felicia Day. My wife just absolutely adores her. I, I like her a lot too. I think she's very good. And one of the most prolific and talented voice actors around. I had a chance to moderate her for, in May, and she's a hoot. That is Tara Strong. Oh, and me. Yeah, I'll be there. Um, I'll be moderating. Um, for many years, I was I, I was snuck in as the only moderator because everybody else would put panelist or actor or whatever. And if you Googled and you went moderator, I'd be the only one that showed up and I would rub it in people's faces. But then they're like, you're not a panelist, though. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's real important that you head over to fanxsaltlake.com. There is Chris right there talking to the crowd. Look how big that is. That is, what, 4,500 people? Is that the size of that? It's a, it's a, it's a tiny bit shy of 5,000 people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's well done. It's uh, Get your tickets now. They're going to get sold out. Uh, they always do. They're, it's uh, it's. I think they get like 100 and something thousand people over the three-day weekend. It's amazing. And it's just awesome. So uh, fanxsaltlake.com. All right. Well, um, we still have some things to get over to. Uh, we still have games to play. And so next week... Synapse is bringing their people over the movie, the movie website Synapse, and we've got our good friend Austin Bashaw has suckered in a colleague, and that's right, Justin Harlan is going to be here. It's going to be Synapse versus Synapse as they go against Little Miss Sunshine. That's right. Uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, it says yellow and it'll burn into the retinas as much as possible. So Little Miss Sunshine. And of course, if you want to be a contestant, head over to matinaheroes.com slash castoff slash application. Or you can just email me at mhcastoff at gmail.com and we'll happily process and send you over the link to the application. Uh, we're at the Cast Off Show on Twitter. We have a Facebook group. And of course, you can go to matinaheroes.com slash castoff to find the links to the video, which includes twitch.tv slash matinaheroes. And special thanks to additional judges, uh, Brendan Agnew and uh, Elizabeth Rapp uh, for judging. So if you don't like the answers, uh, Blake, you can get those two who have never been to FanX. I made sure that we had no FanX people here so there would be no bias towards one of you because everybody knows you both. And they probably would have rend garments in their hair and been crying trying to figure out who to vote for, even though it's blind and they don't know. Uh, but you, when I said you were going to be on the show, Blake, all the people who are panelists were like, I don't want to judge that. I don't want to get mad. I don't want to get mad at me. So uh, I can well, say right now, for you. I can say that uh, Blake would never use this against you. Uh, so, so on behalf of Blake Castleman and today's winner, Chris Provost, I'm Craig Price. This is the cast off. We'll see you next week and at FanX on September 22nd through the 24th.